Mystery Ranch, in association with Monster Face Industries, presents The Action Draculas in Fear in Freshman Year, or The Human Pawns of Don Pteranodon. When you hear this sound, turn the page. Not long ago, in a penthouse high above the town of Harker, fanatical record promoter Don Pteranodon hatched an evil scheme, which he relayed to his assistant and only friend, Mike. They said records were over, Mike. Dunzo, Kaputsky. They said I, Don Pteranodon, was an industry dinosaur. They want a dinosaur? Look at me now. Uh, uh, actually, boss, Pteranodons were pterosaurs. Flying reptiles, completely outside the dinosaur class. Uh, that's a pretty common mistake. Ah, uh, yeah? Well, make no mistake, my friend. I'm gonna rule this town. Go scout me some fresh new talent to sign. Like who, boss? Ah, uh, you know, any uh, glory hound idiot that's good. The next day, Harker High School students Brad Stoker and Lon Creighton were in the heated final moments of a soccer match. Hey, Lon, your boyfriend Brad is hogging the ball again. He's not my boyfriend. He's my best friend. <laughs> my bad. Your best friend is hogging the ball again. Nice job, Brad. So nice to watch you and your ball out there all by yourself. What are you complaining about? We won. Stunning one nothing upset. Lon, when you're old, are you going to be like, hey, remember losing? That was rad. <laughs> Whatever, Pele. We still on for band practice later? Ugh, do we have to? I'm good, but yes, you have to. How else are we going to make it as rock stars when you lose the World Cup? Don't see why I can't do both. I'll get my guitar and meet at the rehearsal space. Soon, Lon returned to his family's bookstore, nestled below their home. Who's the people's champion? Ah, a sports hero. Lon's mother replied. Maybe you'll make enough to keep the shop afloat, since you never help us out around here. Mom, you know I've got sports after school. Hey, what's that weird girl doing sitting on the floor again? Reading her way through our fantasy section. Can't she go to the library? Miss, what's your name? Misty. Misty Murray. My son Lon here would like to know why you don't go to the library. Um... They don't have the latest Secret Centaur Agent of Hoof books yet? You seem pretty well read in the fantasy genre, which Mr. Creighton and I aren't as familiar with. Would you like a job? Really? Yes! You're giving her a job? Especially since our son doesn't do any work around here. Mom! I got sports! Meanwhile, henchman Mike approached another Harker High student, Rennie Renfield. Hey, you. The morose-looking kid. You a musician? Me? I play guitar. I mean, I can play a little of everything, but... I figured you was a musician or an artist by the looks of you. Or from Europe, I guess. Could be from Serbia, easy. Can I help you? More like I can help you. My boss is a record exec scouting new talent. All you do is call him, and you got a chance to be on MTV. What's MTV? Ask your parents. Anyway, he'll record your music. You don't know what my music sounds like. Kid, look at you. You look like the DJ at the Haunted Mansion. You're a superstar. Take this card, give him a call. Hello, Henry Renfield. What do you have there? Misty said. Oh, hi, Misty. Some guy gave me this card. He's looking for musicians to sign. Let me see. This card. I can't stop looking at it. Hey, did you say someone's giving away record deals? Said Brad, arriving on the scene. Hey, Brad. Oh, no. You. Ah, my old friend, Lon. May I call you Lonald? No, because my name is Lon. Listen, Lon and I actually are musicians, so let me see that card. I do not think so, Bradley Stoker. Hey, do I know you? She's the weird girl who hangs around my parents' shop. I'm the weird girl who works at your parents' shop, Lonathan. And you, Brad, stole my boyfriend in eighth grade. What, Chris Lee? One Valentine doesn't make him your boyfriend. Kissing him in the supply closet doesn't make him yours, sir. 
Well, I'm gonna call the number on that card and take something else you want. Misty and Brad both pulled at the card, tearing it in half. Give me the other half. We'll actually use it. Rennie and I are a band. We have had almost three rehearsals. We'll play circles around you. You don't have the drive to be a star. You don't have the guts. <laughs> I'd walk over hot coals if I had to. I'd drink warm moxie. Hold it. Rennie exclaimed. If you both want to prove you've got guts, there's one place in town nobody's brave enough to go. He looked up, up to the one place in town his permissive parents told him never to go. Rennie pointed to the eerie house, high on a hill, a mansion long abandoned, one spoken of in whispers by the citizens of Harker. Madden Castle, you're, you're on. on. Misty and Brad replied, Wait, what are we doing? At midnight that night, outside the ominous, abandoned Manon Castle, Rennie and Misty approached Brad and Lon to settle their dispute. My mom has to be up at 5 a.m. for work, so she was zonked out by the time I left. I left my parents a note in the kitchen. Maybe they'll see it when they get back from their cruise. Maybe my mom will find it when she cleans your kitchen in the morning. I was always curious about this place, but I have a bad feeling about this. What? Meeting two popular athletes who hate us at the condemned castle of an eccentric dead millionaire at midnight? Why would that make you nervous, Rennie? <laughs> Let me handle it. You two actually showed up, Brad said. You two did too. So... So, what do we do now? Rumble? I'm not fighting a girl, said Lon. It wouldn't be a fight, book boy. Nobody's gonna fight anybody, but we have to decide who's calling that number. Okay. We'll give you our half of the card. You will? We will? If you come inside the castle to get it. Soon, inside the creepy castle. I barely fit through that break in the fence. It's like a little kid made it. Or a tiny murderer. Long replied. Hey, Rennie, did you decorate this place? I like the cobwebs. Not so much the rat feces. Rennie said. Hold it. Do you see what I see? Yes. No. Wait, do you see a jacuzzi? No. Then that's definitely a coffin with a dead body in it. Dead body, red cape, stake through the... Stake through his heart! That isn't John Manning. So the schoolyard legends were true. Rennie said... Manning Castle is really... Castle Dracula? What I was going to say, yes. A big murderer. Oh my god! I dare you to pull that stake out. We are not pulling the stake out. Well, I dare you to, um, touch his medallion. I dare you to. We'll do it together. On three. One, two, three. three. And as the four touched Dracula's amulet, it shattered, leaving each of them holding one broken shard. A chill, cold as first October frost filled the room. Strange energy flowed through them, and each gave a shudder as they tried to cry out as they began to change, to transform into something new. And, on moving from his resting place, Count Dracula seemed to grin. When the smoke cleared, the kids stood, having changed. What just happened? Brad, why are you suddenly dressed to go clubbing? Vaughn, what big teeth you have. Uh, what big biceps I have, too! At least you still have biceps! Misty, you turned all... Misty! Oh, I've become some kind of human bat hybrid. Neat. It must have been Dracula's amulet. When we touched it, it broke apart. Brad cried. And we each got one of his powers, I guess? Renny reasoned. Are we dead? I don't want to drink blood! Quick! Put the amulet back together. But when they tried, they felt the presence of a great evil fill the room, and a spectral image of Dracula begin to take shape. <laughs> Whoa! Drop them! The kids were themselves again. It was him! We were bringing him back! We should leave these and go. Where someone else might find them? No. What are we supposed to do? Rennie said. We... Take him with us. We did something very bad tonight, but we can't leave our mistakes for someone else. This is on us, gang. We can never use these powers. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. 
But inside, each of them knew their lives had changed forever. End of part one.